Boone Pickens Stadium, home to the Oklahoma State University football team, stands as a testament to a century of transformation, innovation, and dedication. The stadium, named in honor of the legendary philanthropist and OSU alumnus Boone Pickens, has evolved from a modest athletic field to a state-of-the-art facility, reflecting the growth and ambition of Oklahoma State University. The journey began over a century ago. In 1914, the student body of Oklahoma A&M, now known as Oklahoma State University, decided to name their athletic field after one of the most beloved figures in the school's history, Dr. Lowry Lehman Lewis. Dr. Lewis, affectionately known as Dr. Lou, was a former Dean of Veterinary Medicine and later Dean of the School of Science and Literature. His impact on the university was profound, having served as acting president in 1914 and playing a pivotal role in the establishment of the first School of Commerce and Marketing in the nation. Under Dr. Lewis's leadership, the university saw significant advancements, including the development of experimental stations across the state. The students honored him by dedicating the 1914 yearbook to him and naming the athletic grounds Lewis Field. Lewis Field, initially positioned north-south, was relocated and reoriented east-west to avoid prevailing winds in 1919. It has been there ever since and holds the title of the oldest FBS stadium west of the Mississippi River. The first wooden grandstands accommodating 8,000 fans were constructed in 1920. This humble beginning laid the groundwork for future expansions. The 1920s and 1930s saw significant developments. In 1924, the first steel and concrete structures were added to the south side. And by 1930, permanent seats increased capacity to 13,000. Post-World War II growth was rapid. By 1947, the south stands expanded and a permanent press box was added. The stadium's capacity soared to nearly 30,000. The 1950s brought further expansion with 10,600 additional seats, raising the total capacity to 39,000. The early 1970s marked a significant modernization phase. The removal of the cinder track, lowering the field by 12 feet, and the addition of 20 rows of seats created a more intimate and intense game day atmosphere. Lewis Field also converted from a grass field to an artificial turf at this time. Due to the east-west orientation and shadows cast from the height of the stands, which now had a capacity of 51,000, the natural grass field would not receive enough sunlight to sustain a high-quality playing field, so artificial turf became a necessity. By 1980, a new press box was constructed followed by the installation of a lighting system for night games in 1985. Night games at Boone Pickens Stadium have an allure that has become more widely known among college football fans with the endorsement of PFT commenter from Pardon My Take, who said, The sky in Stillwater, Oklahoma is the darkest sky in the world. It's neon black. What an incredible description. I couldn't agree more. The turn of the millennium ushered in a new era driven by the generosity of Boone Pickens. An OSU graduate, Pickens founded Mesa Petroleum in 1956 and later BP Capital, amassing significant wealth. His philanthropic vision led to a $70 million donation in 2003, spurring the next level campaign, which generated more than $100 million in gifts and pledges involving more than 2,500 individuals. In 2003, OSU broke ground on an $86 million renovation project. 
marking the beginning of an extensive transformation. The stadium, renamed Boone Pickin Stadium, underwent multiple expansions, including the construction of a new south side in 2004 and a north side in 2006. The brick exterior resembles the modified Georgian architecture to complement other buildings on Oklahoma State's campus. In 2006, Pickens provided the largest donation in the history of collegiate athletics, a staggering $165 million, and the West End Zone project was completed in 2009. Boone initially said the gift would make Cowboy football competitive, but during the rededication ceremony, he changed his tune and said, It's not competitive now. It's win. We are going to win. The West End Zone also serves as a multi-level football operations center with features that include coaches' offices, a team meeting room, offensive and defensive meeting rooms, position meeting rooms, a 20,000 square foot strength and conditioning center, a sports medicine center with various options of hydrotherapy, a state-of-the-art locker room with built-in ventilation in each locker, a dining area also known as training table, hall of fame areas, and arguably the most important area, the equipment room, which also includes a massive laundry room and plenty of storage for all the players' helmets, jerseys, pants, a wide variety of cleats, gloves, pads, workout gear, travel gear, towels, and more. Equipment managers will spend however long they need with each player to ensure a proper fit to keep the players safe. There have been aesthetic improvements to Boone Pickens Stadium since its rededication in 2009. In 2011, a flagpole was planted on the southeast side of the stadium to proudly fly a majestic American flag, an awe-inspiring sight when accompanied by an F-16 Fighting Falcon flyover as the Cowboy Marching Band plays the final notes of the National Anthem. Pyrotechnics add to the game day experience after cowboy touchdowns lighting the sky with orange fireworks, but perhaps the most noticeable upgrade happened in 2018 with the addition of the video board that nearly covers Gallagher Iba Arena. The 56 feet tall and 110 feet wide video board currently ranks in the top 10 for a college football only stadium, but feels much bigger due to the proximity to the field. A ginormous thanks to Gary and Claudia Humphreys for such a generous donation to make this happen. From 2017 through 2024, stadium capacity has dwindled from 60,218 to 53,855 in order to give fans more room to enjoy the games. I was at that 2013 Baylor game when we reached maximum capacity at 60,218 and could barely move. So, it was a good choice in my opinion. There's always the chance to raise capacity back up to over 60,000 in other ways. Starting in 2020, Oklahoma State began honoring legends in and around the stadium with statues and the coveted Ring of Honor. In November 2020, a nine-foot statue of Boone Pickens was placed outside the stadium's west end zone. A year later, outside the northwest corner of the stadium, a Barry Sanders statue was unveiled to honor the 1988 Heisman Trophy winner. Hall of Famer Thurman Thomas became the first inductee into the Ring of Honor in 2020. Barry Sanders followed in 2021. The legendary 1945 national champion Bob Fenimore was inducted in 2022 and two-time All-American and College Football Hall of Fame running back Terry Miller was inducted in 2023. Oklahoma State has a legitimate argument for being dubbed running back U. Jersey numbers 34, 21, 55, and 43 worn by these men are the four retired numbers for Cowboy football. 
I expect the first defensive player to make his way into the Ring of Honor in 2024 with the induction of Leslie O'Neill. O'Neill was elected into the College Football Hall of Fame in March 2020. But hey, what is a stadium without its fans and game day traditions? The stadium's design enables the energy from the fans to have a direct impact on the players, especially those pesky paddle people. This is a role that requires unwavering enthusiasm and a commitment to attending games and supporting the team, rain or shine. Their synchronized paddle banging starts as soon as the Cowboys take the field and continues throughout the game, especially during critical moments. The paddle people play a crucial role in making Boone Pickens Stadium one of the toughest places to play in college football. Their noise not only disrupts the visiting team's communication, but also keeps the energy levels high among the fans and players. Their relentless enthusiasm is infectious, spreading throughout the stadium, and their presence serves as the heartbeat of Boone Pickens Stadium. The paddle people must get to the stadium as early as possible to ensure getting front row seats expanding from the west to the northwest corner of the stadium where the student section is located. This means they unfortunately missed one of my personal favorite game day traditions, the walk. This tradition began with head coach Les Miles in the early 2000s and continues through today. Two hours and 15 minutes prior to the start of the game, fans line all the way down Hester Street from the Student Union to Boone Pickens Stadium. The Cowboy Marching Band, Spirit Squad, coaches, and players all walk from the Union to the stadium while fans cheer and show their support up close. The Cowboy Marching Band's pregame performance sets the tone as fans fill the seats. They also set the stage for the Pokes to take the field. Oklahoma State's mascot, Pistol Pete, fires a shotgun to get everyone's attention and begins the O-S-U chant. The pregame hype video doesn't miss. The highlights alone could get the crowd fired up, but it's accompanied by the Hell's Coming With Me scene from Tombstone, arguably the greatest Western action film of all time. This is all happening as players file out of the locker room and through the halls of the West End Zone during the tunnel walk. The Cowboys storm through the smoke onto the field after the opening of the Black Iron Gate. Typically, the stadium is a sea of orange with the occasional blackout game. There really isn't a bad seat in the house, and every fan can feel like they're making an impact on the game. The waving song tradition continues to this day, with OSU fans rising to their feet and waving one arm in rhythm with the song after the Cowboys score. That's followed by the crowd singing the fight song, Ride em Cowboys. Also, after touchdowns, you'll hear the stadium announcer, Larry Reese, exclaim, Here comes Bullet! And the spirit rider gallops onto the field on a stunning black American quarter horse while carrying an OSU flag. After emerging victorious, the team and spirit squad will gather in front of the student section for the singing of our alma mater. Some players will do what I call the Lewis Field Leap, although I don't believe this is officially what it's called, but they'll celebrate on top of the wall with the first few rows of fans before heading back into the locker room for post-game media availability. Every home game is special, but there's one that stands out annually. Oklahoma State's homecoming is one of the best and most long-standing traditions in all of college football. This year will mark the 103rd edition of America's Greatest Homecoming, scheduled for November 2nd, 2024, versus Arizona State. You have to go yourself because there just aren't words to describe how incredibly amazing the atmosphere is during homecoming. From its humble beginnings as Lewis Field to the state-of-the-art Boone Pickens Stadium, the home of Oklahoma State football stands as a monument to dedication, innovation, 
commitment, and the enduring spirit of the Cowboy community. Each game played here is a tribute to the visionaries like Dr. Lowry Lehman Lewis and Boone Pickens, whose legacies continue to inspire and drive OSU to new heights. Hey, share this video slash podcast with an Oklahoma State fan who needs to hear this. I hope you enjoyed this special edition of the Believe in OK State podcast presented by Bet Online. Let me know about your favorite memories in Boone Pickens Stadium in the comments section. If you don't mind, please rate and review wherever you listen. It really helps the show. I'll see you all next time. Go Pokes.